Hey guys, today I'll show you a horror TV series named Swamp Thing Full Episodes. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins in a pitch black swamp forest where three sailors are assigned to venture into the murky waters and drop off a mysterious crate. Little do they know that their actions will bring about deadly consequences. As the three men prepare to leave the scene, their boat's engine fails to start. They are then attacked by a massive force, and the boat violently rocks back and forth. The next second, vines emerge from the water, swiftly pulling one of the crewmates under the surface. The remaining sailors panic, unable to see anything in the darkness. The submerged crewmate struggles to the surface, his face covered in blood, desperately crying for help. As he is about to return to the boat, the vines strike again, ultimately drowning him. The surrounding forest then stirs, preparing for the next wave of attack. The sailors throw explosives into the water in a desperate attempt to fight back. With a deafening explosion, the forest lets out agonizing wails. This enrages the dark forces, causing the vines to launch a lethal assault, piercing the boat and impaling one sailor's heart. The vines lift the body into the air as a show of power. The soul remaining, an old sailor, abandons the ship, attempting to escape the terror by reaching the shore. But eventually, he is also surrounded by the horrifying vines. The next morning, in a classroom, a young girl named Susie appears to be gravely ill. She coughs up black liquid and inexplicably bleeds from her nose. Collapsing in pain, she falls unconscious and is rushed to the hospital by her teacher. Meanwhile, a doctor named Abby is in Africa treating a local epidemic. As a disease control specialist, she maintains her composure when faced with a knife-wielding young boy. She removes her protective gear and calms the boy with a gentle smile, quickly earning his trust. She then takes the boy's sister to be treated, helping to prevent the epidemic from spreading further. Soon after, Abby's colleague informs her of a new assignment from headquarters. An unknown virus is spreading in a small town back home. Upon seeing the details, Abby is shocked to realize that the outbreak is in her long-abandoned hometown. Following headquarters' instructions, the two swiftly make their way to the town where Abby was born. Arriving at the only hospital in town, a doctor explains the current situation. As more and more people become infected, Abby orders all medical personnel to adhere to strict precautions. The disease control team will analyze the situation and try to find a cure to help the town survive the disaster. As Abby enters the isolation room to observe patient zero, Susie, from the classroom, she discovers a tree branch with a sticky liquid on Susie's bed. Believing it may be related to the illness, she takes it to the doctor for examination. Through their conversation, Abby learns that Susie's lungs are also infected. After the doctor leaves, Abby notices a mysterious man reviewing patient reports. Confused, she confronts him about his identity. The man calmly replies that he can help, asking to see Susie's admission records. However, he is then forcibly removed from the hospital, dismissed as an outsider. Abby's colleague then informs her that Susie's mother passed away early, and her father, the old sailor from before, had gone missing in the swamp the previous night. Subsequently, Abby began her investigation and went alone to Susie's residence. At that moment, a police car also arrived at the scene. Abby was surprised to see that the officer getting out of the car was her childhood classmate, Matt. Their unexpected reunion brought them great joy as they reminisced about the fond feelings they once had for each other. Matt then explained that the old sailor was a good father but often engaged in illegal activities in the swamp. The two noticed that something was off. Not only was the front door unlocked, but the house was filled with numerous vines. Suddenly, they heard strange noises coming from upstairs, but no one responded to their calls. As they investigated the sounds, the vines on the walls rapidly spread. The second floor hallway had an eerie atmosphere, with walls covered in vines, plants, and a disgusting green liquid. Matt drew his gun and opened a door to find the source of the noise. They saw a bizarre figure crouching on the floor, seemingly cutting something. Matt then tapped the figure on the shoulder, causing the stranger to panic and fall to the ground. Abby recognized the man as the stranger who had been kicked out of the hospital earlier. He confessed that he was only collecting samples in an attempt to find a treatment method. He asked them to check the adjacent bathroom where they were horrified to discover that the old sailor was dead, standing rigidly with his body covered in strange vines. Faced with a scene they had never seen before, everyone was baffled. Abby found a medicine jar by the sink and suspected that the old sailor had died in pain. The authorities soon sealed off the scene, attempting to determine the cause of the mysterious death. 
They learned his name is Alec, and he was a biologist from the city who had been hired by a local businessman several months prior to analyze the commercial value of the swamp. He discovered the evolution of a magical plant and believed it was related to the patient's infections. Alec hoped that Abby would visit his laboratory. Seeing that no treatment method had been found yet, Abby agreed to the request, and they traveled together by boat into the swamp. They arrived at a large house on the water, which served as Alec's laboratory. Inside, there was not only a complete set of research equipment, but also various plant samples. In the world known to humans, the mutagen was a special element that could easily destroy human genes and cause the human body to mutate. During Alec's research, he discovered a strong biological reaction in the swamp and collected samples from the deepest parts, finding this new type of mutagen. To demonstrate its astonishing effects, Alec placed ordinary vines in a glove box and dripped the swamp mutagen onto them. The vines grew at an incredible speed, filling the entire box within seconds. However, the vines suddenly launched a ferocious attack, seemingly wanting to break through the glass. Alec quickly released a chemical gas, destroying the dangerous vines. At this point, Abby understood that by comparing the patient's blood reports, they could find the connection to the mutagen, making it easier to develop a treatment method to the unknown epidemic. A short while later, the mayor called for an emergency meeting as the townspeople continued to express their outrage. They believed the bizarre outbreak was an act of revenge by the swamp against humans. Since most of the town's area was covered by the swamp, its natural ecosystem was essential for their survival. However, after excessive development by corporations, the swamp had been severely damaged. At this point, the town's wealthy businessman, Avery, stepped in to calm everyone down, explaining that his research in the swamp might lead to the development of a new type of fertilizer and bring huge commercial benefits, providing more job opportunities for the townspeople. Otherwise, the lonely small town would never be able to prosper. After a grand speech, he successfully appeased the residents' emotions. When the meeting ended, Alec came forward to discuss the research findings, suspecting a connection between the epidemic and the swamp. However, Avery didn't care, thinking that getting sick was normal, and mentioned that he had fired Alec two weeks ago before leaving nonchalantly. Meanwhile, Abby collected samples from the old sailor's body, and Alec came to help, learning that Susie's condition was getting worse. Then they removed a vine from the old sailor's body and dripped a mutagen onto it. They were shocked to see the dead plant cells come back to life. However, they didn't notice that the vine inside the corpse was also stimulated, growing wildly fast and controlling the old sailor's body. At the same time, Susie experienced a chain reaction and the horrifying corpse suddenly rose. The two were frightened and retreated to the corner. Then the vine sprouted huge roots and the corpse advanced. Just as they prepared to escape, the vine quickly spread on the ground, tripping Abby. Luckily, Alec intervened in time, freeing them from the dangerous situation. Susie arrived at the scene and fainted from shock after seeing her father turned into a monster. Abby, desperate to save her, carried her away and dodged the vine's attacks. Alec stayed to deal with the monster, throwing a punctured alcohol container at the vine and setting it on fire, eliminating the monster and stopping the vine's wild growth. Meanwhile, Susie suddenly showed no signs of life. With Abby's frantic efforts to resuscitate her, she eventually regained her heartbeat and breathing. After surviving the ordeal, the two began to develop special feelings for each other. Abby decided to investigate the old sailor's fate and went to a restaurant by boat, which was the most popular gathering place at night. They found their friend, the bartender named Liz, who was not only the owner's daughter, but also the town's well-known amateur journalist. With their inquiries, they learned that someone had hired several sailors to venture deep into the swamp every night, seemingly engaging in illegal activities. However, those who went mysteriously disappeared, and no one knew the identity of the mastermind. Avery's wife, Maria, suddenly appeared, requesting a private conversation with Abby. It turned out that her deceased daughter was the one who had tragically died while playing with Abby years ago. Although it had been a long time and the police had ruled it an accident, the woman still harbored resentment and blamed Abby for everything. She warned that as soon as the epidemic was over, Abby should disappear from the town. Facing the death of her childhood friend, Abby felt sad but knew they had to follow the clues. Holding back tears, she moved on to the next location. On a stormy night, they took a boat deep into the swamp, discovering a severely damaged boat pierced by gigantic vines. They found a laptop and a special chemical container on the boat filled with a strange yellow substance, which seemed like a device to release material underwater. 
Subsequently, they returned to the lab where Alec placed the substance into an analyzer. As they waited for the results, they shared their past experiences with each other. Abby admitted to having seen some negative information about Alec online, which made him feel regretful about his past actions. It turned out that Alec had been a well-known figure and a promising biologist in a big city a few years ago, but had falsified research data for the sake of fame and fortune, ending up in disgrace. He realized that what he truly desired was not fame, but the joy of the research itself. So he accepted Avery's commission, hoping to help more people through his research. Abby opened up about his own reason for leaving her hometown. Avery and Maria had a daughter who had been Abby's best friend since childhood. However, just before graduating high school, a tragic accident occurred, and Abby inadvertently caused the death of his best friend. Just then, the analyzer beeped to interrupt Abby's story. They discovered that the yellow substance in the chemical container was very similar to the mutagen collected from the swamp, leading them to suspect that it had been deliberately dumped and caused the epidemic outbreak. Abby suggested taking the substance back to the hospital, hoping it might help find a treatment. Meanwhile, Alec found the locations of other containers in the laptop. To prevent further infections, they decided to retrieve all the containers from the swamp. They split up to carry out the mission. Following the coordinates, Alec recovered several containers from the swamp. As he was doing so, a boat appeared in the distance, shining a bright light at him. Before he could identify the people on board, he was suddenly shot, leaving him injured and unable to escape. To cover their tracks, the assailants fired a bomb at his boat. With his last strength, Alec dove into the water, narrowly avoiding the explosion. As the explosion echoed through the swamp, Abby saw the fire from afar. Alec painfully crawled ashore, but his injuries were too severe, and he soon collapsed. Suddenly, surrounding plants approached, dragging his dying body into the water. Vines pierced Alec as if undergoing some kind of fusion. Abby arrived at the scene only to find the wreckage of the boat and no trace of the culprits. As the mutagen spread through the water, the vines grew wildly and launched a fierce attack on the boat, throwing Abby into the water. Seeing the vines approaching, she frantically swam towards the shore. As she pushed through the bushes, she discovered a sailor's corpse. Just as she had nowhere to escape, the vines seemed to be repelled by some force, retreating back into the water. Alec then emerged from the water, but had transformed into a monstrous, plant-based creature called Swamp Thing. Terrified, Abby trembled uncontrollably. As the monster closed in, she managed to find a way to escape. In the end, Alec watched her figure fade away before losing consciousness and falling into a coma. Subsequently, Abby returned to the scene with the police. They searched the forest for a long time and dredged the water for wreckage, but never found Alec's body. The town's sheriff also arrived. She was also the mother of Matt. After a brief discussion between mother and son, they concluded that it was just an accident. This conclusion left Abby very dissatisfied, pointing out that Alec was investigating illegal dumping and suspecting that there was more to the story, possibly involving a conspiracy. They were warned that there was a terrifying monster in the swamp, but the sheriff dismissed the idea and even mocked the absurd claim. On the other hand, Alec felt helpless in the swamp. Meanwhile, at the hospital, a connection seemed to form between Susie and Alec. Alec saw his horrifying reflection in the water, covered in strange plants. Panicking, he tried to remove the plants from his skin. As he pulled off his own head, he discovered that his body had transformed into a plant structure. Susie felt the same emotions and began to violently resist. In the end, Alec let out a roar of mixed anger and sorrow, falling into a deep sleep in the swamp. The next morning, Susie began to speak strangely, saying that a man was born in the darkness but was constantly hurting himself out of fear. Abby's colleague didn't pay much attention to this, assuming it was just a nightmare. Abby, on the other hand, had a dream about her deceased best friend suddenly appearing, looking terrifying as if wanting to take her life. Waking up in fear, she realized it was just a nightmare. Just then, her colleague called to inform her that the number of patients in the town had increased. Although Susie's condition had stabilized, they still hadn't found a treatment. Abby was temporarily staying at Liz's house and met her girlfriend in the kitchen. Liz came to the kitchen and kissed her girlfriend. After sending her lover off to work, they discussed the accident involving Alec. Liz, who was also a journalist, believed that there was more to the story. However, the police had sealed off the lab, making it impossible to investigate further. Abby decided to ask Avery for help, hoping to gain special permission. Liz was worried and didn't want her friend to get hurt again, but Abby was resolute and set off to visit Avery regardless. Upon arriving at the town's largest mansion, a familiar butler opened the door and welcomed Abby in warmly. Gazing at a picture of her childhood friend on the fireplace, Abby reminisced about their happy memories. 
Avery came out treating Abby like his own daughter, glad to be reunited. He apologized for his poor handling of the situation in the past, causing a young Abby to face pain alone and endure the anger of his wife. He felt guilty and said he didn't want to lose her again. These words relieved Abby's burden, and she was touched that Avery still cared for her. She then mentioned that Alec's research in the swamp might hold the key to treating the epidemic. She hoped that Avery, who had funded the establishment of the Research Institute, could grant her permission to investigate. Otherwise, the epidemic would continue to spread, infecting the entire town and quickly spiraling out of control. However, Avery declined Abby's request, citing business confidentiality. Additionally, Maria secretly went to a restaurant where she met a mysterious witch. This witch could not only predict anyone's fate, but also had the ability to communicate with the dead. Maria pleaded with the witch, who finally agreed to perform another seance. When she tried to summon the spirit of Maria's deceased daughter, she instead sensed a terrifying dark force. The witch was so frightened that she fell to the ground trembling and let out a series of chilling screams, sending Maria flying to the door like an adult toy. The witch then regained consciousness and explained that a dark force had awakened in the swamp and she had inadvertently come into contact with an evil creature. The witch advised Maria to let go of her obsession and allow her deceased daughter to rest in peace, lest her longing for her be exploited by the darkness. Meanwhile, Abby's colleague heard an alarm and went to Susie's hospital room, only to discover that she had escaped by breaking a window. On the other hand, Abby went to a DVD rental store where Alec had once stayed. The store owner, named Cassidy, used to be a well-known actor who starred in the movie Blue Devil. When he learned that the two were looking for clues, he told them they were late, as the police had come a few hours earlier and took all of Alec's belongings. Fortunately, the store owner had a computer with some swamp logs saved on it. Abby took the computer upstairs to search for information. She saw Alec's final log and heard him express his feelings for her, making her feel sad. At that moment, she received a text from her colleague and learned that Susie had escaped the hospital. Meanwhile, a doctor couple, Jason and his wife, received a notification and traveled all the way to the mansion. Both were renowned geneticists who had made significant contributions to the scientific community. In order to get the funding, the wife tried to appease her husband, urging him to engage in polite conversation and not complain about being summoned suddenly. When the couple met Avery in the backyard, Jason went to check on the distressed trees and instructed the gardener on how to care for them, including watering them with sugar water. During the discussion, Avery angrily accused Jason. It turned out that the mutagen dumped in the swamp was the drug developed by Jason. The original plan was to make plants grow rapidly and drain the swamp, exposing valuable land for economic development. However, now a large number of patients had appeared, and Avery himself had become a suspect to the disease control center. Believing that the mutagen was the cause, Avery ordered Jason to stay and solve the problem, or he would no longer provide any funding to their research. At the hospital, Abby explained the situation to Matt. Although it was unclear how Susie had escaped, they needed to bring her back to the hospital for isolation as soon as possible to prevent further infections. Just then, they received news that there were clues about Susie found at the dock. The two rushed to the scene and found Susie's bracelet there, suspecting that she might have entered the swamp. At present, the boat that had already sailed out was manned by a supervisor responsible for patrolling the area. It was headed deep into the dangerous swamp where Susie's father had lost his life, causing Abby to worry. They quickly set off to search for the girl. Unaware that Susie was hiding on his boat, the supervisor received a telegram from the police asking for help in finding the missing child. However, he didn't pay much attention to it, focusing on patrolling the swamp instead. He spotted a suspicious boat that appeared to be engaged in illegal activities, so he turned on his warning lights and ordered the two crew members to stop their work. As the supervisor approached the boat for inspection and demanded to open a mysterious box, his face was suddenly pierced by a harpoon, causing him immense pain. The ruthless crew members decided to drive the police boat to a remote location to destroy the evidence. They ordered their accomplices to retrieve all the boxes, leaving no evidence in the swamp. As Susie's panic grew, the swamp thing sensed the danger. Meanwhile, Abby traveled deep into the swamp on a police boat. Seeing that they were alone, Matt took the opportunity to confess his feelings for Abby, explaining how he had admired her physical abilities since elementary school gym class. But Abby was unaware of his feelings and considered them only friends. This left Matt somewhat speechless, but he decided to continue pursuing her. Elsewhere, the swamp thing sensed a bloody scent, while the crew members prepared to sink the body into the water. Susie, witnessing everything, took advantage of the distraction to jump off the boat and escape, 
However, the sound of the water splashing caught their attention. Seeing the girl hiding in the forest, they grabbed a machete and began to chase her. The Swamp Thing sensed their pursuit, but struggled to adapt to its massive body, stumbling along slowly. Susie found an abandoned boathouse and quickly crawled under the wooden planks to hide. At the same time, Abby discovered the abandoned police boat in the swamp and saw the supervisor lying on the ground. As she checked on his condition, she realized that he was still breathing faintly. Meanwhile, Matt saw lights in the distance and ventured ahead alone to investigate. The crew members found the abandoned boathouse, and in fear, Susie tried to avoid their flashlight beams and stay out of sight. Suddenly, a knife pierced through the wooden planks, causing Susie to scream in a chicken voice. Hearing the noise from the forest, Abby quickly informed Matt to turn back, suspecting that Susie was in danger. As the evil crew member prepared to break through the window and search under the planks, the frightened Susie quickly climbed up a nearby ladder and hid in the attic to evade her pursuer. There was no way out for Susie, but a sudden loud noise came from the water, making the chasing man uneasy. However, no one else was in sight. The man was then attacked by the swamp thing from behind, its massive strength pinning his neck. Unable to break free, the man grabbed a small knife to fight back. This caused the swamp thing to release its grip due to the severe injury. However, its wound instantly healed, reverting to its original state. The monster let out a beast-like roar as the surrounding vines launched a deadly attack, following the intent of the swamp thing. The man was suspended in the air and brutally dismembered by the vines. Facing the terrifying monster before her, Susie was not afraid at all. They began to communicate with each other through thoughts. On Abby's side, she arrived at the abandoned boathouse in the forest and finally found Susie. Worried, she prepared to approach her, but suddenly the swamp thing stood up, startling Abby. As she regained her composure, she quickly took Susie away from the scene. The swamp thing didn't approach them, knowing its appearance was terrifying. In the end, it could only watch them leave. Just then, Matt arrived and they both got on the police boat. When Abby looked back again, the swamp thing had disappeared. Meanwhile, Avery went home to rest but didn't see his wife. He realized Maria still couldn't let go, and she had fallen asleep in their daughter's room. However, he didn't notice that his daughter's soul had been consumed by darkness, and with Maria's persistent longing turned into an evil spirit lying in the bed. During the return trip, Abby asked Susie about the monster. Susie revealed that the monster they saw was actually Alec, who had perished in the swamp. This left Abby in shock and unable to accept the drastic change. Elsewhere, the crew member became an evil spirit after dying and invaded Alec's dreams, accusing him of his cruel actions. As the ghost attacked, it roared that it would come back for revenge. Alec struggled and finally awoke from the nightmare, only to see the dead body of the crew member. He roared in anger and sadness. However, he didn't realize that insects on the ground were also corrupted by dark force, infesting the body and reviving it with an evil force. The next morning, Abby was confused and confided in her friend about what had happened. She explained that Susie went to the swamp to help a strange human covered in plants and vines who had the same name as Alec. However, out of fear, she didn't verify the person's identity and fled the scene in fear. Then she received a message from the doctor, and after arriving at the hospital to confirm the situation, she learned that the disease control center had sent a new team to take over, with a new commander taking charge. Abby had no choice but to follow orders and assist in treatment. The commander was unwilling to involve Abby's ideas. In the end, he decided to inject a large amount of antibiotics into the patients. Moreover, Avery funded this operation, inviting the renowned Dr. Jason to research the dead crew member's body and attempt to create a cure. Abby later went to the morgue and recognized Jason. He noticed the unusual state of the corpse. Although there were parasites in the body and the host had undergone severe mutations, it was all due to the plants, an unprecedented disease in medical history. During their conversation, Jason displayed an arrogant attitude and mocked Abby's medical expertise as insufficient. On the other side, Liz received some inside information from her journalist contacts. She then threatened the bank employee to confess the secrets of the Swamp Project. Otherwise, she would expose his wrongdoings with Avery. It turned out that the bank employee had accepted bribes for forging documents and securing loans for Avery. Meanwhile, Abby was about to take a break in her office when she discovered that her colleague, who had been caring for patients all night, showed signs of infection on his face. He collapsed in pain and began vomiting green liquid. Abby quickly sought help from medical staff and instructed them to use a special treatment plan. Seeing her trusted colleague infected, she felt helpless. 
She then met with Liz and informed her about the situation at the hospital. To prevent the epidemic from spreading further, they decided to sneak into the lab to investigate. Abby also entrusted Liz with the task of searching for clues in the swamp among the wreckage. At the same time, an old man was hunting in the forest, constantly hearing strange noises but not seeing any prey. As he went to investigate, he found countless insects devouring a wild boar. However, he didn't notice the danger behind him and was attacked by the deceased crew member's corpse, ultimately dying in the swampy forest. Elsewhere, Jason discovered that the swamp's conditions were exceptional, with a rapid development of plant life. Seeing the passion in her husband's eyes, the wife felt very reassured, but she suddenly felt confused and forgot what she was doing. It turned out that his wife was suffering from dementia and her condition was worsening. Her husband tried to comfort her, believing that with this research they could develop a gene-repairing drug. Avery and Maria were dining at home when the bank employee unexpectedly arrived, explaining that the bank had started investigating their transactions. Although he had taken Avery's bribe, he was afraid that Liz would expose the incident, putting him at risk of imprisonment. He decided to end their collaboration and warned Avery to repay the loan immediately. Otherwise, he would expose the massive debt and ruin Avery's reputation. The Swamp Project would be forced to terminate as well. Maria inadvertently overheard their entire conversation. Under the cover of dusk, Abby sneaked into the research lab. However, many things had already been taken away, and the mutagens she found had disappeared. She then discovered an experimental notebook and began looking for related clues. Unbeknownst to her, countless bugs had crawled in through the gaps and gathered into a massive evil force. At the same time, the sheriff arrived at the mansion to investigate the murder case. Avery lied, claiming to have no clue about who wanted to harm Alec. He made lewd remarks and invited the sheriff to perform some hormone yoga for fun. It turned out that they had been secretly in love and having an affair for decades. Avery had only married his current wife for her wealth. As the two were about to engage in a passionate encounter, a sudden noise came from upstairs. The sheriff realized something was wrong and left the mansion to avoid being caught by Avery's wife. Maria was in the bathroom, looking at her daughter's bracelet. Suddenly, an evil spirit appeared in the mirror, taking the form of her deceased daughter. The spirit accused the father of being unfaithful and suggested that the mother should take revenge. Maria became indecisive and began to be influenced by the restless spirit. Meanwhile, Abby picked up a bottle of wine, and memories with Alec flooded her mind, filling her with sorrow. Suddenly, strange noises filled the room, and she realized that a large number of insects had entered the house. There were eerie footsteps on the roof, as if someone was lurking outside. The next moment, a corpse broke through the window and began searching for its target for revenge. Its face displayed a terrifying expression as it prepared to launch a deadly attack. Abby quickly lit a tray of fire sticks, and the high temperature produced a deterrent effect. At that moment, the swamp thing burst through the floor, revealing itself to be the target the corpse was seeking. It warned the corpse not to harm its lover. As the swamp thing adapted to its new body, it gained immense resilience. Abby attempted to ambush the corpse with an axe, but realized it was ineffective. The swamp thing then demonstrated overwhelming power, knocking the corpse to the ground. As the Swamp Thing prepared to pursue its advantage, it recognized the corpse as the wicked crew member it had previously killed. Overcome with guilt, the Swamp Thing sympathized with the enemy, who had been corrupted by darkness. So it used its power to purify the corpse. As the insects dispersed, the corpse dissolved into a puddle of mud. The Swamp Thing then approached Abby and removed the glass from her hair, which triggered memories of the past. She became certain that the monster was Alec. Abby asked about Alec's experience and the cause of the mutation. Alec could only remember a great fire and waking up as a monster, having lost his sense of self. Abby encouraged him, believing they could find a way to change him back. Alec revealed the key to combating the epidemic. The virus was not invading, but retaliating against humans. This revelation prompted Abby to return to the hospital and try a new approach. However, under the commander's method, the patient's conditions worsened dramatically, including Abby's colleague, who was now on the brink of death. They tried using more antibiotics, but the virus continued to spread throughout the body. Abby then requested an injection of suppressants to temporarily block the immune system, allowing the virus to coexist peacefully within the body. However, the commander believed this violated normal treatment procedures and angrily ordered security to remove Abby from the hospital. 
Surprisingly, after injected with the suppressant, the colleague's vital signs stabilized, and he regained consciousness, able to communicate normally. This astonished everyone. Finally, the commander ordered to apply the suppressant to all patients, and the epidemic began to gradually improve. Meanwhile, Maria prepared to retire to her daughter's room for the night. Her husband was waiting in the room and apologized for his past mistakes, hoping they could return to their loving days. After sweet-talking her, he hoped she'd provide more funding to help Alec finish his research so they could live a wealthy life together. This made Maria realize that her husband was only after her family's inheritance. Believing it was all a waste of their savings, she rejected his proposal, cutting off his financial support. Abby went to a restaurant to drink and relax. As it happened, Matt also came to meet her and praised her heroics at the hospital earlier that day. This made Abby slightly shy, and the two drew closer. Under the influence of alcohol, they danced together, lost in the romantic music. At the same time, the swamp thing in the jungle witnessed this scene, feeling heartbroken watching his loved one embraced by another man. Elsewhere, Cassidy returned to the DVD store. As he prepared to turn off the television, he discovered the witch sitting in the corner. It turned out that Cassidy could not leave the small town under some unknown arrangement of witchcraft. Through the witch's divination, he learned that he had an unfulfilled mission. Tired of his mundane life, Cassidy waited for years. This time, the witch's divination revealed a different future, predicting that his mission was related to Abby, who had come to the town. On the other side, Liz's girlfriend, who was tasked to investigate the swamp, salvaged the wreckage of the small boat, discovering many bullet holes on it. This indicated that the explosion was not an accident. She hurriedly informed Liz of the situation. Meanwhile, when the bank employee returned home, he heard strange noises. Initially thinking it was a burglar, he picked up a golf club as a weapon. To his surprise, it was Avery who emerged, scolding him. As the bank employee attempted to explain, he was punched and retreated upstairs, fearfully using the golf club to create distance between them. Avery continued to advance, but the bank employee refused to back down and threatened to expose all the secrets. As a result, the golf club was snatched from him, and he was knocked unconscious by a blow to the head. To clean the scene, Avery killed him by throwing him into the bathtub. He then cleaned the weapon and wiped the blood from his face. At that moment, the doorbell rang. Avery hurried downstairs to check and saw Liz through the peephole. He suspected she knew the secret about the loans. At the same time, a lumberjack and his father went into the swamp late at night to cut down valuable trees in the forest. Due to the vibration of the chainsaw, keys from the motel and several human teeth fell from a tree. Feeling uneasy, the lumberjack was about to tell his father to stop working when a rotting corpse suddenly fell, landing on him and injuring his arm. After breaking free, he noticed something strange seemed to have entered his wound. Frightened, the father and son fled and didn't dare to report the incident. The swamp thing sensed the danger and used its vines to touch the corpse, feeling a strong, dark energy. The next morning, the lumberjack arrived at the restaurant for his part-time job, explaining that he had run into trouble in the forest the night before, causing him to be late for work. As he started working, his wound became unbearably itchy. Unbeknownst to him, the dark matter had already infested his body. Terrifying hallucinations appeared before him, and he saw a poisonous snake suddenly slither into the sink. As the lumberjack looked shocked, Liz approached to check, but saw nothing unusual. She asked him to hurry up and finish washing the dishes. Under the influence, the lumberjack saw the snake wrapping tightly around his hand. Unable to break free, he grabbed a kitchen knife in panic. However, only those infested could see these terrifying visions. To others, it seemed as if he had gone mad, unsure of how to help. In the end, the lumberjack lost his sanity, turned on the garbage disposal and thrust his hand inside, attempting to kill the snake from the hallucination. As the sound of bones crushing filled the air, blood poured from his mangled hand. Just before losing consciousness from pain, he scratched the old store manager, transferring the dark matter to a new host. Afterward, Abby ventured into the swamp alone on a small boat. She decided to stay in town to help Alec return to normal by researching a cure. Suddenly, vines emerged from the water, attaching to the boat and pulling it to shore. Abby then met Alec in the forest. At her suggestion, the swamp thing provided a sample of itself. It also warned of a dark force awakening and advised her to be cautious when she returned. Afterward, Abby took the sample back to the hospital for research. 
At that moment, Jason entered and noticed the data being input on the computer. He pointed out some errors in the numbers. However, upon examining the sample under a microscope, he was astonished to discover animal cell activity patterns within the plant tissue. Jason proposed taking the sample for analysis. He believed it could expedite finding answers and also complete the task assigned by Avery. To help Alec return to his original appearance, Abby agreed to the request, but insisted on being informed of any research findings firsthand. The two reached an agreement and began studying the sample together. Abby then went to the patient ward, where she saw that all the patients had been discharged. Although Susie had fully recovered, her father's death left her without any relatives in town. At this point, Avery announced that a grand party would be held to celebrate the town's victory over the epidemic, delighting everyone. Maria then approached Susie with concern, and during their conversation, she reminisced about her lost daughter. Resuming the role of a mother, she revealed a long-lost smile. In order to win his wife's favor and secure more funds for research, Avery decided to adopt the homeless Susie. As for the sheriff, she went to the restaurant to investigate the lumberjack's cause of death, but nobody knew the details. Abby received a message and arrived on the scene, learning from Liz that the lumberjack had been to the swamp the previous night. Seeing the strange occurrences in town, including the sudden outbreak of the epidemic and the inexplicable resurrection of Alec, Abby suspected another virus from the swamp. Meanwhile, the old store manager, infested with dark matter, suddenly felt unwell and experienced terrifying hallucinations. His surroundings turned dark and he heard eerie laughter. Anyone infested with dark matter would see their deepest shadows. The store manager then relived his childhood experience when a group of criminals broke into his house and brutally murdered his mother. Abby noticed something amiss as the store manager became strange, seemingly terrified by an unseen scene. He even picked up a gun for protection and began shooting, shattering bottles and windows. The sheriff heard the gunshots and returned, warning him to put down the weapon immediately. However, under the influence of dark matter, he could not see other people in his hallucination. Fortunately, his gun jammed. When the sheriff stepped forward to restrain him, her neck was scratched. Abby quickly fetched a sedative from her medical kit, and as the drug took effect, the store manager returned to normal. However, the sheriff remained unaware that she had become the new host of the dark matter. Sometime later, the store manager woke up in his hospital bed. He explained that the scene he had witnessed was a tragedy from his childhood, which had been replayed before his eyes. Upon further questioning, Abby discovered the lumberjack's whereabouts the previous night. She then went alone to the swamp to investigate the cause of the outbreak. She reached the location where the lumberjack had been and found a chainsaw that he had forgotten to take with him. She also discovered an old hotel key on the ground. Just then, she heard a strange noise and cautiously went to investigate, only to find a horrifying, decayed corpse. Although the cause of death was unclear, it appeared to be a gunshot suicide. The Swamp Thing could sense Abby's arrival and informed her that the corpse had been infested with a terrifying dark matter which had been released and sought new hosts. Abby realized the truth and suspected that the sheriff would be the next victim. The Swamp Thing warned that this evil substance did not belong to the human world, and only by returning it to the Swamp could another tragedy be avoided. Meanwhile, Avery invited everyone in town to a banquet. The witch, who was in the hallway, sensed that a bloodbath was about to occur in the town. She instructed Cassidy to protect Abby no matter what, or else he would not be able to break the devil's deal and escape the town's shackles. It turned out that Cassidy had made a secret deal with the devil in the past, in order to become a star. Although he had tasted fame, he had paid a painful price and could never leave the town. Elsewhere, Abby returned to the town and met Liz, learning that the key found in the swamp belonged to an abandoned hotel. At that time, the hotel's guests went mad one after another and brutally hurt themselves, but the police and doctors were helpless. The horrifying incidents finally stopped when the last victim disappeared. Abby realized that the epidemic wasn't over yet. The lumberjack had accidentally entered the forbidden area and brought the dark matter back to the town. The two rushed to the banquet to prevent the tragedy from happening again. At the same time, the sheriff was maintaining order at the banquet. Under the influence of the dark matter, terrifying hallucinations appeared before her. She saw her son being attacked and stabbed multiple times in the chest. The sheriff rushed to rescue him and called for an ambulance. As his son seemed to be on the brink of death, the sheriff became frantic and started shouting. The attacker stood in place, smirking, enraging the sheriff, who pulled out her gun. 
Abby arrived at the scene to try to explain that it was all a hallucination, but the sheriff had lost her senses and was ready to shoot in revenge for her son. Fortunately, Cassidy threw himself at the sheriff to prevent the conflict. During the commotion, Abby's arm was scratched by the sheriff and the dark matter infested her body. To avoid causing harm to others, she hurriedly left the banquet. Abby then took a boat alone to the swamp and kept calling for Alec in the forest, hoping to find a cure. Suddenly, the moonlight was covered by dark clouds and the surroundings plunged into darkness. Terrifying illusions began to appear, and it turned out that Abby's deepest fear was her father, who abused her mother daily. This terrified Abby, who struggled to break free but couldn't. However, in reality, it was the swamp thing standing in front of her, holding her protectively while absorbing the darkness into its body. Due to the influence, it felt unbearable pain and staggered away, heading towards the direction of the corpse. Finally, it transferred the dark energy back into the corpse and used the power of nature to seal it deep underground. The next morning, the two of them talked about recent events, but neither of them could explain the situation. They knew that this was beyond human understanding. After the mutation, Alec not only gained the power of nature, but could also sense the consciousness of the earth, indicating that the polluted swamp was causing suffering to the creatures and awakening dark forces, which was preparing to launch a terrible counterattack against humanity. They were also warned that the danger was far from over, and the new attacks would approach soon. Meanwhile, on the phone, Maria thanked her husband and expressed satisfaction with their decision to adopt Susie. As a result, she was willing to provide more funding for her husband's research project. Just then, there was a commotion on the second floor, and even the chandelier began to shake unusually. Maria hurriedly ended the call and went upstairs to investigate. At the same time, Avery pretended to be attending a meeting while he was actually having an affair with the sheriff, planning a night of passion until dawn. Maria saw Susie terrified, huddled on the bed, and said that a horrifying ghost appeared in the room. Initially, Maria thought it was just a nightmare, but as she went to get a blanket, water flooded out from under the bathroom door. Confused, she opened the door to find the bathtub overflowing with filthy water and her dead daughter lying in it. Heartbroken, she hugged her daughter, expressing her longing and love, but she didn't notice that the evil spirit had possessed Susie. Although Alec had gained power after the mutation, he still missed its human appearance and wanted to return to his original life. Suddenly, the consciousness of the swamp awoke and quickly bound Alec with vines. Terrifying illusions appeared with numerous corpses surrounding it. Overcome with fear, Alec let out a massive roar and finally broke free from the vines. Then, a stranger rowed a boat towards them, but he was not a real human being. Instead, he was an embodiment of nature's consciousness, explaining that everything that had happened was to grant new abilities. He offered comforting words, hoping that Alec would continue to maintain faith and not let appearances affect his inner self. Additionally, Cassidy packed his bags and prepared to leave the small town. He believed that after saving Abby once, he had already fulfilled the witch's mission. However, as he prepared to drive away from the town, he couldn't shake his unease and stopped. He then got out of the car and slowly walked towards the town's boundary. Suddenly, his hand burst into flames and he fell to the ground, wailing in pain. It turned out that the demon's curse had not been lifted yet, so he had no choice but to put off leaving and regretted making a deal with the demon. At this moment, the demonic power suddenly awakened and lurked within the costumes in the car. On the other side, Avery continued his smelly exercise until dawn. Although he wanted to continue, the sheriff was exhausted and prepared to change clothes and head to the police station. During their conversation, Avery learned that Liz had found clues of the epidemic. The sheriff also wanted to reopen the investigation into the cause of death and find the killer who murdered Alec. This made Avery somewhat worried. Meanwhile, Abby was using voice recordings to log her research findings. She discovered that the cells from the Swamp Thing sample could not only change shape at will, but also possessed unlimited regenerative abilities, completely defying the laws of biology. Dr. Jason was eavesdropping at the door and asked about the origin of the plant sample. He also believed that if used wisely, it could spark a medical revolution allowing humanity to conquer all incurable diseases. He speculated that the sample was related to Alec, but Abby was worried about attracting trouble and did not reveal any information about the swamp thing. When she received a call from Susie, she quickly excused herself from the scene. Avery used the restaurant's kitchen, claiming that he just wanted some soup. This made the owner aware that something was not right. However, Avery held most of the properties, including the restaurant itself. 
The owner had no choice but to accept everything. Avery then warned that the owner's daughter, Liz, would stop investigating the murder case or else the father and daughter would be in trouble. At this moment, Liz arrived at the restaurant and declared that she would continue her investigation, even if it threatened her father's life. This infuriated Avery, and he left the restaurant with harsh words. Jason hired a boatman to take him to the research lab. Upon arrival, he discovered strange footprints on the ground that did not resemble human tracks. He then collected plants from the scene and found that they were the same as Abby's sample. He suspected that they came from a massive creature. Elsewhere, the stranger took Alec to a part of the swamp, explaining that there were many ancient trees containing a wealth of memories. When it communicated with the trees, images from several years ago appeared, showing a young Abby searching the river for her lost friend. Alec was about to help when he realized that this was a scene from the past. At this moment, the stranger suddenly disappeared. Meanwhile, Abby received a notice and arrived at Avery and Maria's mansion. Susie was humming a tune upstairs, which happened to be Abby's best friend's favorite song. This surprised Abby, who went up to the room and opened the door. Susie was sitting on the bed, so Abby approached to check on her health. Although nothing seemed amiss, Susie spoke just like her best friend, and even called each other by nicknames that only they knew. At first, Abby thought it was a prank and was about to leave when the door suddenly closed by itself. The friend revealed a terrifying appearance and scolded Abby for what happened on the bridge, hoping they'd both die in the swamp to atone for their actions. She then spat mud and snakes from her mouth, and Abby, unable to accept this, angrily left the room. As Abby went downstairs, Abby accused Maria and warned her not to continue misleading Susie. However, Maria believed that the spirit that had returned was her daughter who had died years ago and refused to discuss it further. When Abby left the mansion, she encountered a witch who had come in a hurry and explained that Maria was being tormented by an evil spirit, putting her life in danger. But it was already too late. Under the influence of the evil spirit, Maria hastily drove away from the mansion. On the other hand, the sheriff received a tip and arrived at the scene in the wilderness. It was said that on the night Alec died, some camper was hunting nearby. He witnessed the murder and also found the packaging of the explosives used. The sheriff then learned that the murderer in this case was her own son, Matt, who was driving Avery's boat at that time. The camper armed himself with a shotgun and demanded a large sum of money, threatening to expose the truth. However, the sheriff pretended to be distressed, and when the camper let his guard down, she quickly shot him dead. To protect her son, the sheriff silenced the camper and staged the scene to look like a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Elsewhere, the possessed Susie lured Maria to the swamp, where the apparition of her daughter emerged from the water. Although Maria was frightened, she still approached for the sake of her daughter. The evil spirit released Susie from its possession, causing her to collapse. Meanwhile, Abby found Maria's car by the bridge, and the now normal Susie ran up, explaining that the ghost's plan was about to succeed. Abby quickly called the police and then went to investigate the river alone. Seeing Maria standing inexplicably in the water, Abby rushed to stop her, but Maria had already been possessed and suddenly attacked. Abby almost drowned, but managed to escape after a fierce struggle. In the end, the evil spirit changed its target and dragged Maria into the depths of the water. Abby searched desperately but couldn't find a trace of her. Just then, the Swamp Thing heard the call and came to the rescue, pulling Maria out of the water. After a strenuous effort to save her, her heartbeat finally returned. Abby broke down in tears and blamed herself for everything. At that moment, Alec used its newfound ability to connect with nature, allowing Abby to see the memories hidden within the trees. Then the scene flashes back to the day of the incident. Abby and her best friend drove to the bridge, where the already drunk friend decided to do something daring before graduation. She suggested a crazy challenge to jump into the river together. Abby playfully agreed, but pushed her friend off the bridge first. However, she quickly realized something was wrong when the friend didn't surface. Panicked, Abby jumped into the water to help, only to see her friend emerge, laughing at her terrified expression. Suddenly, the friend was attacked and pulled underwater by an unseen force. At first, Abby thought it was another prank, but upon diving in, she found her friend had been dragged into the depths and vanished. Now, Abby realized her friend was killed by some terrifying dark force. Although still sad, Abby let go of the guilt she had been carrying. At that moment, Matt arrived nearby, calling out Abby's name. The monstrous Alec had to leave quickly and hid behind distant trees, watching as Matt showed care for Abby. 
Meanwhile, Liz was about to head home after work when she found her car's tire slashed with a small knife stuck in it. Two masked people surrounded her and threatened her not to continue investigating the murder case. Liz, however, wasn't afraid and counterattacked, aiming for the assailant's weak points. Cassidy happened to be nearby and rushed to help, but he was attacked by another masked person, bleeding profusely. Seeing the trouble they had caused, the two villains quickly fled the scene. Avery visited the hospital to check on his wife's condition, only to be intercepted by Dr. Jason, who revealed that the sample Abby had obtained came from a gigantic living specimen. He explained that capturing this prey would lead to groundbreaking progress and create huge business opportunities. Avery then introduced Jason to some top hunters, arranging a hunting operation. Meanwhile, the monstrous Alex saw a tied-up rabbit in the woods. He went to rescue the rabbit, only to fall into a hidden animal trap. It turned out that the trap was set by the hunters, who hid at a distance and attacked with tranquilizer guns. Enraged, Alec destroyed the sturdy trap and escaped the tranquilizer gun's range. The two hunters were incredibly shocked, realizing this was the strongest prey they had ever encountered. As he emerged from the trees, the two frightened hunters opened fire, only to find that bullets couldn't hurt the swamp thing. They decided to flee back to their boat and leave immediately. Alec shook the trees, launching sharp wooden splinters at the hunters. The two hunters were quickly injured and finally escaped the scene. Meanwhile, Dr. Jason conducted research using Abby's plant sample and created a new type of mutagen. To test the reaction in humans, he secretly injected it into the IV drips at the hospital. The injured Cassidy fell into a coma. Liz discovered that his background was very mysterious. There was no family phone number on his mobile. Seeing no possibility of recovery, Liz felt guilty and confessed that all of this happened because they got involved with Avery. However, she had no evidence and suspected that the sheriff was bribed. This truth left Abby shocked and angry, and they stormed out of the hospital room to confront Avery. They told him that Cassidy might never wake up from his coma, but Avery showed no remorse and admitted his wrongdoings. He warned Abby to leave the town immediately or they would be in even more trouble. After a heated argument, they parted ways angrily. Later, the two hunters were taken to the hospital with numerous splinters lodged in their bodies, screaming that they were attacked by a monster. The observant Liz deduced that it was the Swamp Thing's doing, which made Abby worry. They believed that the Swamp Thing wouldn't harm people without reason and went to the swamp to check the situation. The sheriff felt guilty about the murder, but Matt didn't care, thinking it was just one life. She was shocked by her son's cold-blooded nature and slapped him in anger. Then Matt revealed that he was following orders to kill Alec to protect his mother. It turned out that Avery had many pieces of evidence against the sheriff, proving that she had taken bribe money and engaged in illegal activities for years. These crimes were enough to sentence her to life imprisonment, so Matt became an accomplice to prevent Avery from exposing all the evidence. Seeing her son being used, the sheriff wanted revenge. At that moment, they were informed that the hunters had been attacked by a monster, and Matt went to the swamp to investigate. At the hospital, a nurse came to change the IV drip, unaware that Jason had already injected the mutagen. Shortly after, Cassidy experienced a change. As the machines sounded an alarm, Liz noticed something wrong and saw Cassidy's heart rate skyrocketing. The next second, he suddenly woke up, screaming in pain, and his skin felt as hot as fire, which frightened Liz, who dared not approach. Jason arrived after hearing the noise, but deliberately let Cassidy leave the hospital to continue observing the changes. Meanwhile, Abby went to the swamp, calling for Alec, believing that he attacked the hunters in self-defense. However, as news of the monster spread throughout the town, Alec became disheartened, thinking he was a terrible creature. Abby kept comforting him, believing they could find a way to restore him to its original form. Suddenly, a boat appeared in the distance, and Alec immediately went on alert, explaining that the hunters wouldn't give up easily. He prepared for battle and hid in the woods, ready to ambush. Jason hurriedly sought a private conversation with Avery. Although the hired hunters failed to capture the swamp creature, Jason had successfully created a new drug. Not only did it revive the injured Cassidy, but it also had the potential to cure incurable diseases. Seeing the business interests behind it, Avery was overjoyed. He asked Jason to complete the report so that the world's wealthiest investor would invest in their project. Additionally, Matt and his partner arrived at the swamp and found giant footprints on the ground, unlike any creature they had ever seen. Realizing that something was amiss, they armed themselves with guns and began investigating in the woods. He had his partner search along the shore using a boat. 
As they ventured deeper into the woods, something suddenly approached them. It turned out to be Abby, who warned them to leave the swamp immediately. But the Swamp Thing launched a swift attack. Abby quickly stepped in to stop it, allowing Matt to escape unharmed. She explained that the monster was Alec, who survived the explosion but had his body transformed by some chemical agent. They were still searching for a cure. Feeling guilty, Matt asked Alec about his experience, but he could only recall being attacked from the shadows and didn't see the attacker's face. In the end, Matt informed his partner that there was nothing in the woods and seemingly kept Abby's secret. Meanwhile, Jason's wife was awakened by shouts outside. Suddenly, Cassidy knocked on the window, in pain and begging for help. Jason also heard the noise and rushed outside to check on the situation. They found Cassidy's body emitting white smoke as if undergoing an unknown mutation, followed by blue flames. Avery suddenly fired a warning shot, telling them not to approach him. The terrified Cassidy pleaded for help, but no one seemed willing to assist. Just as he was about to unleash his anger, Jason's wife injected him with a sedative, ending the chaotic scene. Although Avery was somewhat dissatisfied, he didn't want to halt the plan and ordered Jason to find a solution. After going through numerous twists and turns, Matt finally returned to the police station. He told his mother everything and prepared to kill Alec once more. On the other hand, Cassidy was taken to the hospital after falling unconscious. The witch, who had already seen through his fate, knew his mission wasn't over. He was about to face a more dangerous challenge to break the devil's curse. She cast a powerful spell to alleviate Cassidy's pain. When the mysterious power entered his body, the blue flames gradually dissipated and his condition stabilized. Meanwhile, the monstrous Alec returned to the lab and looked around, recalling memories with Abby and feeling nostalgic. He was worried that the longer he remained a monster, the more he'd lose himself and drift away from Abby. Driven by desire, Alec suddenly awakened a new power, mysteriously producing a flower in his hand that emitted a hallucinogenic powder. As they were both confused, Abby was moved to tears, seeing Alec briefly transformed back into a human. Realizing the effect was temporary, Alec took advantage of the moment to express his hormone feelings. Abby shared the same thoughts but was famished from a long day. Alec opened a cabinet to grab some long-expired cookies when a strange noise came from outside. Dense foliage rushed into the room. It turns out Alec had not only gained supernatural powers, but could also control plants' growth with his thoughts, bringing fresh fruit with branches. Abby tasted a plum and found it sweet, curious about Alec's other abilities. They discovered Alec's senses were unusually sharp, allowing him to hear plants' voices. Alec mentioned a nearby decaying area overtaken by dark forces where plants were dying in pain. To cure Alec's mutation, Abby decided to venture to the decaying land in search of a potent antidote. On the other hand, Avery had arranged a meeting with the world's richest man that evening. But Jason's preparations were complex and difficult to understand, leaving Avery feeling troubled. Maria made some exquisite dishes, hoping to win the billionaire's favor. Suddenly, the sheriff barged in, stating that he had some police matters to discuss privately with Avery. As they entered the study, the sheriff angrily berated Avery, knowing his greediness but never expecting to fall into a trap involving his son in a murder case. The sheriff expressed her dissatisfaction, admitting that Alec hadn't died but had become a deformed monster. She warned that they must immediately eliminate Alec in the swamp or the truth would be revealed and everyone would be imprisoned. So Avery informed his wife that he needed to step out for a while and would return before the tycoon arrived. On the other hand, Abby was taken to a mysterious area in the swamp. As Alec's joy grew, countless beautiful flowers bloomed around them. Even Abby had never seen such a miracle before. Although everything was beyond scientific understanding, they felt incredibly excited. They eventually arrived at the decaying land, a dangerous area filled with silence and death, and a result of humans excessively damaging the environment. This caused the dark forces to rise from the earth. Despite Alec's objections, Abby insisted on collecting plant samples in search of a cure for the mutation. Meanwhile, Maria secretly visited Dr. Jason according to their plan. She asked about the progress of the experiment to ensure that the medicine would be developed on time without any side effects. Although Jason was confident, he was confused about the conversation and thought everything should be reported to Avery. At this point, Maria took matters into her own hands, saying her husband would never return and she would take over all decision-making power while continuing to provide research funding. On the other hand, the sheriff took a boat deep into the swamp, loading her gun with bullets as if prepared to kill. This made Avery nervous, worried that the sheriff had other plots. 
Then Avery confessed his motive for killing Alec, who had discovered their illegal activities and was continuously investigating. Fearing that his plans would be ruined, Avery sent Matt to carry out the assassination, cover up the evidence, and falsely claim it was all for the town's development. Avery suggested that he should be the one to end it all. The sheriff reluctantly handed over her weapon and led the way to search. Meanwhile, Abby felt a sense of oppression in the decaying land, where darkness had corrupted plants, leaving only withered vegetation in sight. Alex stopped and warned that they couldn't stay any longer. When Abby finally found animal carcasses and wanted to collect samples, she was suddenly attacked by dark forces and her arm was grasped by tree branches. With Alex's help, they escaped, but not without injuries and bleeding. After quickly bandaging up, the two hurriedly left the decaying land as ferocious dark forces pursued, causing trees to collapse in their wake. Elsewhere, the sheriff wandered in the twilight forest but couldn't find Alec. Sensing something was off, Avery prepared to shoot the sheriff, knowing the sheriff wouldn't spare anyone who used her son. Avery was about to pull the trigger when the sheriff invited him to play a hormone hide-and-seek. Although Avery hesitated, he decided to shoot and eliminate the threat. Suddenly, Matt attacked from behind, saving his mother from danger. Together, they knocked out Avery. The sheriff didn't want to leave any traces at the scene, so she decided to drag Avery to the boat and end it all there. On the other side, the tycoon drove to Avery's mansion for the appointment. Upon finding out that Avery hadn't returned yet, he felt somewhat disappointed. But under the enthusiastic hospitality of Maria, he agreed to enter the house and enjoy the delicious food. Meanwhile, Alec and Abby finally returned to the lab, where they discovered that Abby's wounds had worsened. The toxins in her body were spreading. As an expert in diseases, Abby knew she didn't have much time left. Seeing that she couldn't hold on until she reached the hospital for treatment, Alec focused his thoughts. Under his command, dense branches broke through the windows, laden with healing herbs. However, the dark forces had already penetrated too deeply, and the healing only caused a violent resistance within her body, making Abby cry out in pain. Elsewhere, the sheriff arrived at the location where they planned to dump the body. At this point, Avery regained consciousness and revealed a secret he had kept for many years. He said that if Matt pulled the trigger, he would be responsible for killing his own father. It turned out that the sheriff had always known the truth but never told his son. Avery had secretly bribed the doctor and already knew the result of the paternity test. This left Matt stunned and he began to question his mother incessantly. Taking advantage of the argument between mother and son, Avery attacked with a small knife. The sheriff picked up the gun to fight back and shot him in the leg, but Avery managed to escape by jumping into the water. Seeing no one on the water's surface, they assumed the body had sunk to the bottom and quickly left the scene to treat the son. On the other hand, Abby still felt immense pain. The dark forces were too powerful, and the healing herbs couldn't take effect. Alex suddenly had an idea, using his supernatural powers to force the herbs in her body to grow rapidly and absorb the toxins. Finally, Abby passed out, and the toxins in her body completely dissipated. After eating his fill, the tycoon gradually lost patience and scolded Avery for being late. Maria immediately reported the research results, stating that a brain-dead patient had been diagnosed to fall into a permanent coma. However, after being injected with Jason's developed drug, the patient miraculously recovered within half a day. This piqued the tycoon's interest, and he was willing to continue the discussion. In the end, he praised Maria's cooking and signed a secret contract for a massive investment. After surviving the ordeal, Abby slowly regained consciousness. Seeing that Alec had saved her life and stayed by her side, she sincerely expressed her love and rewarded him with a kiss. On the other side, Jason felt overjoyed after the meeting, as he would soon receive substantial research funds and a professional experimental team. This would not only accelerate the development process, but his wife could also become the first beneficiary. However, Jason's wife appeared puzzled and had completely forgotten the meeting that had just taken place. Jason realized that her condition had worsened again and decided to speed up the experimental project to find a cure for his wife's dementia. Meanwhile, the sheriff arrived at the mansion with her severely injured son. It turned out that everything was part of Maria's plan to get rid of her husband. Now, they joined forces to eliminate their common enemy, each for their own interests. After this dangerous encounter, Alec asked his lover never to return to the swamp and move to the city to live a normal life. He realized he had a great responsibility to stay and maintain the balance of the swamp. As the hallucinogenic effects wore off, Alec reverted to its terrifying appearance. Saddened, he sent Abby away. 
She then drove out of the small town, informing Liz of her plans. She decided to take samples from the decaying land back to the disease control center for comprehensive research, hoping to find an antidote. Later, Abby returned to the disease control center and handed over the plant samples from the decaying land. She asked the analysis department to conduct comprehensive tests and warned them about the toxic substances. At this time, the newly appointed deputy director arrived and criticized Abby for her dereliction of duty because she disobeyed orders to stay in the town, but failed to report her daily progress on time. The deputy director warned her not to violate orders again. Elsewhere, Avery, who was not dead, managed to climb back to the shore. He staggered through the forest, searching for direction. Under the influence of dark forces, he suddenly saw a hallucination of the sheriff. Fearing he would be shot, he pleaded for mercy while lying on the ground. However, the sheriff did not pull the trigger and inexplicably left the scene. This made Avery puzzled. Just as he was about to catch up and ask questions, the vines suddenly appeared on the sheriff's face, and she transformed into a terrifying monster that attacked him. But in the blink of an eye, the monster disappeared, and Avery realized it was just an illusion. Avery, having lost a lot of blood, could no longer continue walking. Just as he was about to lie down and rest, he saw the swamp thing standing in front of him, with a ferocious expression on its face. Abby returned home to await the test results. Her colleague brought food and they happily shared a meal. Abby confessed the truth she had been hiding, saying that several scientists experienced bizarre mutations, which she suspected were related to the epidemic in the town. To prevent scientists from becoming experimental subjects, she had gone to investigate the swamp alone. Avery, who had fallen unconscious from excessive fear, regained consciousness and realized he was in a laboratory. He saw strange vines implanted in his leg, writhing in his wound. Panicking, he quickly pulled them out and threw them on the ground. At that moment, Alec appeared and stopped him, explaining that it was a healing herb that could cleanse infections. This revelation shocked Avery, who realized that the sheriff hadn't lied. Alec had not only survived, but had become a terrifying, powerful monster. He tried to win his sympathy, but Alec angrily rebuked him. Avery showed no remorse, and his actions caused the destruction of the ecosystem, the rise of dark forces, and the transformation of Alec into a monster. On the other side, Abby tried to explain Alec's transformation. Besides being covered in vines all over his body, he could freely control plants and communicate with nature, witnessing the memories of the swamp. Although this sounded very strange, like a story made up out of thin air, her colleague had seen similar situations and witnessed corpses grow branches. He had also contracted the town's infectious disease, so he trusted everything Abby said. They decided to join the investigation together, find a way to help the monstrous Alec return to normal. However, when her colleague was about to go home and rest, he was attacked by a stranger on the street and was taken away in a black car. Now, Avery discovered that the Swamp Thing desperately wanted to return to normal. Avery began to tell lies, saying that he would use all his resources to help restore his appearance, and that he had already brought Dr. Jason to town, who was an expert on genetics research. This filled Alec with hope, and he began to trust Avery. He then controlled the plants to bring a small boat nearby. Avery promised to bring Jason to assist with treatment the next day. The next morning, Abby prepared to enter the analysis department to view the report, but her access card lost its privileges, leaving her puzzled. The deputy director came to explain the situation, revealing that the samples had been quarantined and no one was allowed to view the analysis report. The deputy director lied, saying that there had been an outbreak overseas and her colleague had been sent out early in the morning. Then, without any further explanation, Abby was taken into a conference room where the tycoon appeared. He said that he had talked with her colleague last night and knew about the Swamp Thing's situation. He wanted Alec to cooperate and emphasize that they did not plan to capture the Swamp Thing for cruel experiments or drug development. Abby quickly sensed that something was wrong. She refused his offer to cooperate and warned him not to disturb the Swamp Thing in the swamp. Then she left a voice message for her colleague, telling him that she planned to visit the small town. After returning to the town, Avery immediately visited Jason, showing him the gunshot wound on his leg. The healing method was something he had never seen before. He described his experience in the swamp and confirmed that Alec had become some kind of creature. Jason, however, did not seem surprised, explaining that the tycoon already had this information. Avery then learned the news of betrayal and realized that the sheriff's assassination attempt was a plot orchestrated with his wife. Enraged, he decided to take revenge and proposed the idea of curing Alec as a way to repay him for saving his life. 
But Jason was shocked and explained that once the Swamp Thing returned to human form, he would lose his miraculous regenerative powers and no longer have any commercial value. This would also cause the Tycoon's cooperation plan to fail. Under Jason's persuasion, the greedy Avery chose to prioritize his own interests. After midnight, the two arrived at the meeting point, where the Swamp Thing also appeared. He recognized the renowned scientist Jason and expressed his desire to become human again. Jason agreed to the request and suggested going to the lab for treatment. However, Alec explained that since his mutation, he had been trapped in the swamp and couldn't leave. Just then, he sensed an approaching group of soldiers and quickly fled the scene. It turns out to be the mercenaries hired by the tycoon. While each of them was battle-hardened, they hesitated to attack the terrifying giant creature. The swamp thing transformed its arms into sharp spikes and threatened them to leave the swamp, or everyone would be left as corpses. The mercenaries suddenly attacked, attempting to subdue the monster with freezing gas. A fierce battle ensued with mercenaries being killed one after another. Avery cautiously approached, picking up a gun from the ground. As the chaos cleared, Alec launched a swift attack, but Avery took advantage of the opportunity to shoot the unguarded monster. The mercenaries concentrated their firepower, firing freezing gas until the Swamp Thing was turned into an ice sculpture, losing consciousness and its ability to fight back. Later, Abby arrived at the scene, only finding a large number of bullet shells and traces of freezing gas. Sometime later, Alec was transported to a hidden factory disguised as an abandoned building, housing a fully equipped laboratory inside. Alec was made to fall into a deep sleep and be placed on a surgical table. Abby went to seek help from Liz, explaining she had been suspended from work and her colleague had been temporarily transferred overseas. She suspected that everything was a conspiracy orchestrated by Avery, leaving no one to help the Swamp Thing. Liz agreed to help without hesitation. They went to Dr. Jason's residence to search for clues. Meanwhile, Avery arrived at the hidden lab, where Alec was still asleep. The monster's body was restrained, and Jason used intense green light to disable its regenerative abilities. To avoid any mishaps, a backup generator was installed in the lab. They then began to thaw the monster, preparing for a dissection experiment. Elsewhere, Cassidy regained consciousness in his hospital bed when a demon suddenly appeared uninvited. Cassidy recognized him as the demon he had made a deal with and began to complain about the events, asking for a way to break the curse. The demon used his powers to show Cassidy a vision of the future, in which Abby and Liz broke into the mysterious factory and got into trouble. They were eventually surrounded by a group of mercenaries and were killed in a hail of gunfire. The demon warned that this was the future that would unfold, and only Cassidy could prevent it. Meanwhile, at Jason's residence, Abby saw Jason's wife, who didn't know her husband's whereabouts. As the two talked inside the house, Abby noticed dementia medication on the table. Seeing the wife's strange behavior, she realized it was a symptom of the late stages of dementia. Liz discovered a suspicious blueprint on a table and secretly took it. Abby's inquiries yielded nothing, and the two had to search for more clues. On the other hand, Jason began dissecting the Swamp Thing's body, but its skin had become abnormally hardened. He had to tear open the outer layer. Suddenly, Alec woke up and questioned Jason about his actions. Abby, on the other hand, asked the staff of all the hospitals and found out that Jason hadn't been there for several days. Judging from the stolen blueprint, it seemed to be a mobile laboratory. They discovered a recently purchased abandoned factory in Avery's registered properties, which matched the blueprint. The two went to investigate the scene, trying to find clues about the Swamp Thing. Despite Alec regaining consciousness, Jason continued his dissection and shared his research findings. Seeing that the internal organs were protected by tree roots, he used a saw to cut them out and then mercilessly examined each organ. This made the Swamp Thing incredibly sad, but it could only watch helplessly as it was dissected. Jason discovered that the plant-based organs had no function, and even removing the heart didn't affect the body's normal operation. This meant that the real Alec had died long ago, and the plant body had absorbed his memories in some way, creating a creature with human consciousness. However, the monster was just a massive plant and could never become a human. The Swamp Thing was deeply hurt and couldn't accept this truth. Meanwhile, Cassidy found out that his final mission was to assume the identity of the Blue Devil and become a superhero to save the girls. This left Cassidy somewhat confused, as he believed the Blue Devil was just a movie character and that wearing the costume wouldn't grant him supernatural powers. However, the demon denied this and took out the movie prop mask of the Blue Devil. With a display of magical superpowers, he instantly unlocked the handcuffs on Cassidy's hospital bed. He warned Cassidy to make the right choice and then silently left. Cassidy put on the mask, deciding to punish the evildoers. 
The mask suddenly emitted a glow and released a surge of power, granting Cassidy the Blue Devil's superpowers. His body then transformed into a demonic shape. Maria tried to contact the tycoon, but was refused by his assistant over the phone. The assistant was unwilling to provide any response. Then, her husband suddenly appeared with a psychiatrist in tow, explaining that he had obtained an official court order. Maria was taken by medical staff to a mental hospital. Meanwhile, Abby and Liz arrived at the abandoned factory according to the address, carefully avoiding numerous guards and sneaking in through the back door. Suddenly, sprouts grew from the ground, forming a guiding line. They realized it was a signal left by the swamp thing. Following the sprouts, they arrived at a large hall, but guards were approaching from another direction. Just as they were about to hide in the electrical room, Liz accidentally kicked an iron rod. The clanging sound attracted the mercenaries, who immediately came to investigate and noticed the intruders hiding in the electrical room. Abby shut off the power, plunging the hall into darkness. However, the mercenaries turned on their flashlights, preparing to break down the door to the electrical room. Suddenly, a loud noise came from behind them. Everyone turned to look, and a blue fireball flew towards them. The mercenaries hit by the fireball wailed in pain. Although no one appeared before them, they were still frightened and started shooting wildly. As the burning mercenary turned to charcoal, everyone began to search the area, trying to find the intruder's figure. The Blue Devil launched another attack, instantly devouring a mercenary's soul. His partners opened fire, but the bullets could not harm the demon. The Blue Devil then went on a killing spree, turning the scene into hell on Earth. Meanwhile, Jason continued his experiments, unaffected by the chaos outside. However, he received a warning from the mercenaries and had to leave the scene with his organ samples. Abby, unaware of the chaos outside, was taken aback when a badly injured mercenary burst through the door, warning of a terrifying demon before being killed by the Blue Devil. Both Abby and Liz were stunned, unable to believe the scene before their eyes. As the Blue Devil left the scene, Abby decided to go out and search for the Swamp Thing, finding dead bodies everywhere. The two then arrived at the lab, finding the Swamp Thing in a terrible state. Abby quickly destroyed the shackles and shut off the green light suppressing the plant's powers. Seeing Alec being brutally dissected, she felt sad. As Alec regained its regenerative abilities, his previously hollowed-out organs were recreated by plant cells. This confirmed Jason's hypothesis that the now Alec was a mutated plant body. Alec decided to return to the depths of the swamp to investigate the location of his original demise. Although Abby was still unclear about the situation, she followed him back to the swamp. As everyone left the factory, Cassidy woke up in his human form, naked and surrounded by men's corpses. Terrified, he fled the scene, fearing he'd be mistaken for a psycho killer. Meanwhile, Liz decided to return to the factory to investigate the mercenaries' identities and expose Avery's conspiracy using the media. On the other hand, Matt got drunk and drove on the road. In his confused state, he sped up, resulting in a severe car accident with his fate unknown. Jason happily returned home with the samples, thinking that by utilizing these plant organs, he could develop a cure for dementia. As he prepared to share the news with his wife, he realized something was wrong. During his absence, his wife had suffered another episode and consumed several days' worth of medication at once. Due to the overdose, her body lost control and trembled. Additionally, Avery came to visit his wife, who was confined in the hospital room, and confessed to bribing a well-known judge, so Maria would never have the chance to be discharged. She admitted to ordering the assassination to avenge his years of infidelity. She also knew Avery had been stealing her wealth for fame and fortune. The two ended up parting ways after a heated argument. Meanwhile, Abby followed the swamp thing into the depths of the swamp. He didn't offer any explanation and just entered the water like a zombie. Abby was worried but could only wait on the shore. Soon after, the swamp thing emerged from the water carrying a corpse. It turned out that the corpse was the real Alec, and the one they'd encountered was just a humanoid plant. Both were devastated by this revelation. The swamp thing, unable to accept the truth, collapsed to the ground. Abby offered comforting words, saying that the Swamp Thing had inherited Alec's consciousness, helped the town through the epidemic, and saved her during a crisis. Abby encouraged the Swamp Thing to maintain its faith and not lose itself. Although it could never become human, it could still create a new life. At that moment, the Swamp Thing sensed danger and prepared for an attack as a group of soldiers appeared, seeking revenge. It decided to fight back fiercely and not let the villain succeed again, so it hid the corpse underwater and left. Early the next morning, Abby returned to the town's restaurant and told her friend about everything, admitting to putting up a brave front in front of the Swamp Thing. 
Abby wished for the return of the real Alec. After being comforted by Liz, they decided to find the mastermind behind the scenes. Abby set off for the mental hospital, hoping to gather information from Maria. On the other hand, Jason's wife suffered from serious syndrome due to an overdose of medication. Although she was conscious, she was paralyzed and terrified as her husband bound her to a chair. Jason showed her samples of organs containing miraculous cells, believing that if his wife ate them, she would gain regenerative abilities and repair her degenerated brain. Elsewhere, the tycoon hired a group of henchmen and purchased weapons, ordering the extermination of the Swamp Thing. To avoid failure, he decided to use the corpse for research instead. Avery rushed to stop him, arguing that using heavy firepower would destroy the experimental samples. However, the tycoon rebuked him, blaming Avery's previous advice for the loss of many men and the destruction of the lab. The tycoon was resolved to kill the Swamp Thing, planning to claim all research findings for himself. Elsewhere, the sheriff received a message and rushed to the hospital. After the doctor's explanation, she learned that her son had been in a serious car accident due to drunk driving. The treatment process went smoothly, and her son would soon regain consciousness. Meanwhile, Liz went to Cassidy's rental shop. Cassidy was upstairs packing his luggage, seemingly preparing to leave the town. Now, she confirmed her suspicions and discovered that Cassidy was the blue devil who had broken into the factory. She was surprised and grateful for his help back then. Having finished his mission, Cassidy decided to move to a big city and become the superhero Blue Devil, continuing to fight crime elsewhere. He entrusted the rental shop to Liz and bid his final farewell before driving away from the town. Elsewhere, Maria was becoming unstable while confined in the hospital room. Forced to take large amounts of medication, her mental state began to deteriorate, and she experienced terrifying hallucinations of evil spirits coming for her life. At this point, the witch visited and woke her from the nightmare. The witch explained that the pain was caused by triggering the dark power of the swamp while summoning her daughter's soul, and the nightmares would only get worse until death ended the torture. In the end, at Maria's request, the witch cast a spell on her. The tycoon and his henchmen began hunting the swamp thing in the forest. They found its footprints and confirmed they had entered its territory. They sent a team member as bait to lure the creature into their attack range. Suddenly, there was a strange noise in the bushes. The soldier opened fire but didn't hit any targets. While changing the magazine, the henchman fell into a set trap and cries of pain echoed throughout the forest. When Abby arrived at the hospital room, it was already too late. After the witch's spell, Maria had been relieved of her pain and her consciousness was forever lost in a fantasy world, happily living with her daughter. Seeing that Maria could no longer communicate, Abby had no choice but to leave. On the other hand, Jason turned the organ samples into a delicious dish and brought it to his wife. He explained that it was the heart of the swamp thing, containing miraculous cells that could cure all diseases. As his wife panicked, Jason ate the sample himself. He assured her that he would never risk her safety before confirming the effects. However, he suddenly collapsed in pain, convulsing uncontrollably. The tycoon and his henchmen had been wandering in the forest for quite some time, but couldn't find their prey. They discovered the body of a team member hanging from a tree, which frightened the tycoon, leading him to order a retreat. However, the path they had come from suddenly disappeared. Now it's clear that the Swamp Thing was the true hunter, and the trapped henchmen were merely prey. Then the vines started writhing, moving agilely to surround everyone. The henchmen quickly took out their machetes to fight back, but the vines kept coming relentlessly. Meanwhile, after regaining stability, Jason slowly got up. His body underwent some sort of mutation, and he began to awaken the power to control plants. This excited Jason, and he planned to let his wife experience the same feeling. Now, Abby came to visit Jason's wife. Upon entering the house, she realized something was wrong and called the hospital. However, Jason stopped Abby, and the phone fell to the ground as the call connected. The sheriff was waiting by her son's bedside, feeling guilty about everything. Suddenly, Avery made an uninvited appearance, causing the sheriff to draw her gun in defense. The sheriff learned that Avery had no ill intentions and wished to reconcile with her. Avery was even planning to divorce Maria and started a new life. However, the sheriff stated she could never forgive Avery, who had not only turned her son into a murderer, but also nearly killed him. She warned Avery to stay away from Matt, or she would shoot him. Additionally, Jason continued to cook the Swamp Thing's organs. Abby felt angry and blamed him for the cruel act. However, in Jason's eyes, the Swamp Thing was merely a giant plant but not a real human being, even if it possessed the will of Alec. 
Just as he was about to feed the organs to his wife, Abby rushed forward to stop him but was immediately subdued. Fortunately, Matt arrived with a location from the phone and attacked with a stun gun, causing Jason to fall to the ground. Meanwhile, the henchman had become exhausted from fighting the vines. Suddenly, the vines began to retreat, seemingly preparing for a more ferocious attack. The team leader ordered his men to open fire and everyone began shooting frantically. As a result, the vines launched a swift assault, instantly killing the team leader. The Swamp Thing then charged out and began its slaughter. Faced with the monster, the remaining henchmen fled in terror. On the other hand, with the help of Matt, Abby escaped the dangerous situation, and Jason's wife was sent to the hospital for treatment. Liz also received the news and came to check on her. In the end, Jason was arrested, awaiting trial. Furthermore, Matt regained consciousness in the hospital bed. When he learned that Avery was still alive, he felt relieved, not wanting to bear the guilt of murder and hoping his real father, Avery, would survive. This moved the sheriff, who apologized and promised to start a new life in another city once they had both fully recovered. Seeing that her son's condition was stable, the sheriff left the hospital with peace of mind. At that moment, a dense fog began to drift outside. Just as the sheriff was preparing to drive home, she discovered Avery hiding in the back seat. Before she could react, the sheriff was stabbed by a sharp knife. Then, Avery sank both the body and the car into the swamp to destroy the evidence. However, Avery also underwent a strange transformation, and he coughed up some plant from his mouth, seemingly infected. The tycoon was terrified and fled through the forest, but the swamp thing quickly caught up to him. He fell to his knees, begging for mercy and claiming that he had vast wealth and could grant any wish. The swamp thing ordered the tycoon to return to the city and told people the horrible events in the swamp, ensuring that no one would venture there again. In the end, the tycoon fled in a panic. At this point, the Swamp Thing experienced a hallucination of Alec, who seemed to remain in its consciousness. The Swamp Thing initially wanted to leave the swamp and live in a place without humans, but it couldn't let go of its concern for Abby. In the end, the Swamp Thing decided to stay and protect the swamp, preventing the spread of evil and becoming a superhero in the human world. After some time, Abby returned to the Swamp Laboratory. Although she knew Alec couldn't be revived, she still cared for the Swamp Thing. As dark forces continued to grow, they prepared to confront them. Sometime later, Matt returned to the station only to find the place in shambles. There were no colleagues left inside, and the surroundings were filled with strange plants. Even the sturdy prisons had been destroyed by vines. He found the bodies of his colleagues on the ground and drew a gun in defense. It turned out that Dr. Jason, who had ingested the organs, had undergone a terrifying mutation. His body gained the power of nature and also developed a form similar to the Swamp Thing. This left Matt stunned. Ultimately, he was ruthlessly killed by the mutated doctor, and here concludes the whole season. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.